Hey everybody, welcome to another Job Site Live. We are here in O'Leary, Ohio. And today, on today's Job Site Live, we're gonna cover all things flex shaft. So that is all three machines. We're gonna cover the flex shaft 102, the 204, and the 306. We've gotten lots of uh, direct messages the last few months asking, when are you gonna cover flex shaft? Well, today is the day. Uh, if you remember, we launched the 102 and the 204 at WET 2019. We launched the 306 recently uh, at this year's uh, 2020 WET in Indianapolis. Uh, we have lots to cover today, also flex shaft accessories. Today we have both Jeff Albertini, he's our product manager over flex shaft, and we also pulled Adam Daniels, one of our local sales TM, territory managers from the field in today as well. Uh, we want this to be interactive, so if you have questions, please go ahead and ask questions along the bottom. You'll see Tim Dumpy. His handle is Tim Dumpy. He is a director of our Underground Technologies group, um, and he will answer those questions. If you want to wait till the end, there's the question icon along the bottom. Click that, ask the question, and we'll ask Adam and Jeff real time those questions at the end. Um, if you, we, we, so as, as far as prizes today, we're going to go ahead and give away two rigid stools. You probably have seen these before um, at the counters at uh, one of your distributors and one lucky winner today will receive both of those stools. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Becky. So first thing first, hi, Jeff Albertini. So product manager at Rigid, been focused on our, our flex shaft drain cleaning technology and really excited to be here today to be able to take you guys through the full flex shaft suite of products and, and the attachments that we have. And you know, hopefully we'll address a lot of the questions throughout the presentation, but as things don't get covered or something comes up, let us know and we're gonna, we'll be all over it and let you know. So first thing first, just flex shaft drain cleaning technology. How is it different than traditional drain cleaning? It all really starts with, with the cable. These cables are built for high speed drain cleaning. So our traditional drum and sectional machines are more higher torque drain cleaning. So they are a spring wound cable that relies on torque to penetrate through a blockage. So you, you run a drain cable down the line, you build up that tension with the cable, and it acts as a spring to, to break through those obstructions and, and effectively clean drains. Where flex shaft is very different is there is no force required. It's all about the speed of the chain spinning and the cable going. So the cable is built for those high speeds and when it's spinning at high speeds, our chain knockers expand to the wall of the pipe to clean wall to wall. And since it's enclosed in the nylon sheath, you're able to run an inspection camera in line and have multiple jobs being performed at the same time. So you're not going down the line, coming out, inspection camera out, back to drain cleaning, highly efficient, really turns uh, jobs around a lot quicker so you can get more jobs in a day and ultimately make more money and, and get more profitability and productivity out of our flex shaft machines. So the 102 uh, and the 204, as Becky mentioned, we released at the, the wet show in 2019 with a lot of great excitement and, and energy behind that. So first off with the 102, you know, uh, one and a quarter to two inch drains right in our model number, that's what those stand for, and 24 pounds and uh, a 9.99 list price. We've also got the 204, which is under 40 pounds, uh, 70 feet of 5 16 cable with a list price of $14.99. And these two machines, we have chain knockers for plain carbide penetrating. I'll show you a little bit more on that later. And the big thing was, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, so the 102 is quarter inch cable up to 50 feet long. So we've got a 50 feet solution for one and a quarter to two inch drains, really great for, for houses, you know, residential work, things like that. The 204 for two to four inch, also good in certain residential applications, but now getting a little more into commercial, getting into those four inch lines, uh, you know, really great for all soft blockages, hair, soap, scum, grease. And as you upgrade your chains to carbide and penetrating, now you can start attacking scale and various roots. So after wet 2019, the, the biggest thing we were being asked is, you know, we need a machine that can go clean out to clean out. We need that 100 feet of drain cleaning capacity. And that's what we brought to this last year's wet with the K9306. So now we've upgraded to the 3 8 cable, 3 8 inch cable, and this is for three to six inch lines. So that's what the additional cable size is doing. It's opening up your applications for larger pipe sizes. If you're trying to use a 102, 
in a four inch pipe, the reason it's rated for that two inch is that cable is so flexible. If you've got that big of an opening for the cable in it, it's more room for that cable to find a weak spot and potentially flip over on itself and get you into trouble. That's why it's important to know what drain sizes you're using and sticking to the ratings that we put on these machines. So the other thing I just wanna show you is just a quick walk on the full 306. You know, we've added the iClutch recently, which is an, an additional cable protection feature to really get the most out of the machine. So first thing I'll show you is just the, the telescoping handle and how that, that works. So we've got two, two pins on the back. You just release those and then you don't have to hold on to them. Otherwise the safety will catch and then you've got to pop deep detent pins out. So you just slide this up, those connect in. And now I've got my, my cart system so I can transport, move it around, very maneuverability. And the other really nice thing, you know, how we incorporated these, these wheels at the top of the handle is I have an additional way to, to transport the machine on all fours. So now I can use it as a cart style um, instead of a dolly style. And I can hold things on top and have myself a very easy way to be able to, you know, still have that one trip drain cleaning like you have with the K9-102 and K9-204. The other nice thing here is this handle in the front. So when you are going to load this into your van, into your truck, we have the touch point in front of the machine. So as you come down to grab it, these wheels will contact with the truck bed. And now I have multiple touch points to be able to load the product right into my, my work vehicle. So we tried to make you know, those touch points very intuitive, very interactive in the right places uh, to be able to transport the machine as effectively as possible. And then the last thing I wanna show you here is we have a, uh, uh, you're able to rotate the actual clips on the back of the machine to be able to quick dump your cords off. So you can quickly take those on and off to be able to, uh, you know, get to work faster. So it's just another little feature for, you know, how we incorporate, you know, everything that's part of the machine into these products. So hope all that helps. Uh, the other thing I wanna just show you guys before we get into to each one is just talking the different chain knockers and the applications for those chain knockers and kind of the, called the, like the drain cleaning philosophy. So again, I talked about high speed and finesse versus force and why it's important to let the speed of the chain knockers do the work. If you're going for any type of soft blockage in a soft walled pipe, you know, that's what we put with every single machine. Everything ships standard with our plain standard chains. So if you guys can see those on camera, I'm not sure how well that'll come through, but these are the smooth style chains, really great for PVC, soft wall piped, any type of soft blockage. So what will happen is I showed you, you know, these will clear wall to wall. So you're able to, and Adam will show this in his demo, how you're able to navigate very small openings and then still clean the full wall of the pipe. So that, that's what really is unique with high speed drain cleaning, bringing that additional solution, not having to opening up lines to get to that four inch access to fit a four inch cutter through. You're able to get to that wall through a very small access point. So the, the next uh, product we had when we first launched was just the regular carbide chains. So these have the carbide links on here, which are really great for descaling, going after scale inside a pipe, uh, even going for those like thinner roots. Now this will work great for, for grease and soft blockages as well, but that's why it's kind of the upgrade to be able to get to that scale and root application. So we have these available on all three product lines, the 102 up to the 306 for, for every pipe size. And then we also have uh, the penetrating heads that we released at the wet show this year as well. So these are designed for each machine. We have some smaller profile ones for the 102 to be able to continue to have that, you know, excellent drain navigation that flex shaft allows. And now if you've got a full, you know, soft blockage or some roots infesting the line, you've got a way to be able to get through that and start opening that line. And the key here with, with really all uh, flex shaft drain cleaning is you want to get as far downstream as possible. So if you're doing a grease line and you just can't push it, obviously, you know, what we say and what you do are, are sometimes different things, but what you wanna be able to do is push that as far downstream as possible, establish a flow, find the, the flow channel, and then get water running so that as you're clearing, everything is downstream flushing away from the chains, allowing the chains to spin more freely to prevent them from binding up, prevent clutch out, prevent over torquing the cable, that's just the, the basic kind of cleaning philosophy with, with all the flex shaft machines. And we'll show you that with our demonstrations coming up shortly here. So as you go up to a, a descaling application and you need some of the carbide links now, a, a really good practice here is doing about a foot to three feet of the drain at a time. So same philosophy, go as far downstream as you can and have water flowing to be able to clear all those chips that are, are coming off the pipe walls 
and work the cable kind of back and forth to really get that pipe back to its initial state. So then you pull back three feet, you go up one foot, pull back three feet, go up one foot. And that same kind of process all the way down the line to get all that scale out of the pipe. And the last one is the penetrating. So again, very similar with the carbide, but with the added functionality to be able to get through those and help you navigate downstream if you are in front of a hard obstruction or just a full blockage. So the same, same kind of philosophy applies. But now, say I'm going after roots with a flex shaft machine. There's kind of two different applications in, in, in my mind. You have kind of like the lighter roots, thinner roots that are on, on the pipe wall. That's where, you know, like a traditional drain cleaning machine, you're gonna run that all the way out to the blockage and it's gonna clear everything on the way. But with flex shaft, you don't need to be running the machine until you get to the blockage that you're attacking. And since you're able to use your camera and pipe, you can, as, uh, as, as our friend Ken Byer says, you're a sewer surgeon. You're able to be very precise with what you're attacking in pipe. And it's, it's great because now I can see if I have smaller roots and I can just do spot cleaning. So I line up my chain on those roots, step on the foot pedal, pull the trigger, and clear those out on the spot. Again, water flowing, flush the drain down the line, flush the uh, roots down the line. And now if I have a harder obstruction, that's where the penetrating head is, is, is a great you know, upgrade to be able to get through that. So if you can't get past the blockage, what's gonna happen is you're gonna run it going forward. And primarily you don't want to do that if you if you can avoid it but the way we wanted to show uh, today with a demonstration is if you are kind of forced to, to run the machine going forward and you're going at super high speeds and then you hit an obstruction that you just didn't see coming you know you just can't see it on the camera it's too dark there, there's just too much going on you, you just can't see it so what I wanted to show you this out here is a demonstration that we're going to show you on how our, our clutch works So what we've got in our, and this is actually, uh, if you can see the whole kind of, kind of screen set up here, this is very similar to what we had at the, the wet show. So this is kind of our whole, uh, you know, bringing the wet to you right now. And when we start to run this, you know, you'll see uh, exactly how this works. So what's great here is we've got some nylon ropes inside of the pipe. So what I'm going to show you is how our new eye clutch works with the 306. And then Adam's gonna show you the importance and managing your drill settings to be set up for success with the 102 and 204. So we're gonna show you pushing right into the blockage at high speed, getting the chains bound up and, and tied up and how our new feature is really protecting this cable from kind of the, the worst application of going high speed and just jamming something into a blockage. So we'll tighten this back on. And the other thing I'll show you here is after I do the, the clutch out, I just want to show you we've got a, uh, a preloaded uh, kind of simulated grease blockage here. So this is what's in the pipe. So when we were designing the eye clutch, you know, it was really important to us that we were not sacrificing performance for protection of the cable. You know, we wanted to get those best of both worlds so you can get the most out of the machine, but not have to worry about, you know, uh, getting in, into trouble with, with something happening. So as much as we could do to put those preventative measures in place is, is really what we did. So what we'll, we'll show you is we'll clutch it out and then I'll come back and I'll clean from, uh, from downstream back, just like I was talking about. And that'll take us from a full blockage to wall-to-wall to -wall clean. So you'll be able to see that and I'll do that demo right now. So excited to show you. So as I do this, just to take you through the setup. So we've got the 306 set up right now. We've also got our M40 with the VIA and our HQX dock. So brand new products on the diagnostic side that are shipping within a couple of weeks here. So it's really, really neat way to show another uh, tool in the truck for having your uh, Wi-Fi module connect to a smart device. So now this becomes your monitor in pipe. So uh, what I'll take you through now is kind of that drain navigation. Again, you know, you don't need to be running flex shaft until you kind of get stuck in those uh, areas that you just can't navigate. So, for example, if you can see on the, on the screen here, I'm up in the pipe, I've got a blockage in front of me, and as I push it up, I'm getting stuck on it. I can't get through. Now, obviously, I've got the benefit of, of knowing exactly what I'm attacking here and doing, but the general cleaning philosophy still applies. Now, I can just kind of step on the pedal, try to, um, you know, as we call it, like kind of goose in the trigger, you know, just to get the chain spinning, get them up off the ground. So what I'll do is I'll get them up off the ground while I'm pushing. And now I got it right through the line. I'm pushing it downstream. 
And now I'm gonna show you how the clutch works, which is really, really exciting. I think this is gonna be, be great for y'all to see. So I'm gonna run it right now. And then uh, we'll show you how the clutch is engaged on the machine. So I'll push it full speed ahead right into these ropes and tie this thing up. So now I'm tied up, I'm in the blockage. The motor automatically shut off. I've kept my foot on the foot pedal just to show you the blinking light showing that the clutch is engaged. Obviously you're gonna feel it, you know, the, the motor stopped running, I don't feel any vibration in the cable. So we've just given an extra, extra visual signal that your clutch has tripped. So now I'm gonna take the foot off, light will turn off, and now I'm reset the motor, and now I'm actually stuck in the rope. So this is a great time where you're just gonna do that, kind of just step on the trigger, try to get unstuck. And there we go, broke it free. And I think we'll do this, we'll do this again. I'll show you the same exact uh, demonstration here, but we can show you from uh, the access on the side of the pipe here. You wanna leave this in or? I think you can get a pretty good shot if you come up close here. And I'll do the same thing. I'll push it right in and you'll see how that chain gets tied up. So there we go, should be stuck in the blockage. The clutch is tripped again. And uh, you can see the red light is back flashing on the machine so I know that my clutch is engaged. So I'll step off. Again, I'm stuck. Stuck. So I'm still stuck, so this is a great opportunity for me to try to reverse and get unstuck. There we go, and that works. So that's, that's the other uh, great feature. I didn't, didn't mention it earlier with, with just all of our flex shaft machines and the innovation that our cable brings to the market is the ability to run the cables in both forward and reverse applications. Primarily you want to run forward, you know, like a traditional drain cleaning cable. But it's much different from the standpoint that you're not going to unwind the cable like you would a traditional cable. So you are giving up a little bit of torque performance just from the, uh, the way the cable, how much torque the cable can hold in forward versus reverse. Forward versus reverse is slightly less, you know, 10 to 15%. But the idea is still there. If you got some, something stuck on the pipe wall, you just can't get it off. There's something sitting on one side that's a great time to just try reverse, spin it for a few seconds, see if you can clear whatever's left in the pipe wall to really get it back to that wall-to-wall -wall clean. And, and especially if you know, you're doing this for prepping for any kind of relining application and you really need to get that pipe as, as milled out to that initial condition, having that forward and reverse, reverse feature is really helpful in, in doing that. So next I'll show you is just clearing out the obstruction. So the whole point of that demo is, yes, we built in protection on the cable, but we still get the job done. And it's not gonna, you know, nuisance trip on you and trip out on blockages that it should be having no issue with. So now I'll show you that one. Right. So now we're gonna the cable. camera and pipe we're able to see that the job is done and, and move on to the next one so that's a, a really exciting way for us to show this this feature this technology and now Adam's going to show you the same kind of principle but what you need to do to set up your drill for success with the 102 and 204 thanks Jeff so as Jeff mentioned our 204 and our 102 does run off a battery powered drill when you're talking about drills any standard um, professional grade battery powered tool will work. Um, it's very important that it is a professional grade and it is very important that it is battery powered. Uh, we do not recommend a corded tool for this application because the corded tool does not have a clutch mechanism built in and if it does not have the clutch mechanism built into the drill it does run the risk of um, over torquing and kinking the cable or breaking the cable on the inside of these units. 
So as Jeff mentioned, a couple of checkpoints I'm gonna go through when I set my drill up to make sure I have the most success with my flat shafts is first and foremost, I'm always gonna check my drill. And on some drills, there's on the side, there's different modes. On this drill, there is not. But some drills have modes for hammer drill, for the actual drill mode, or for actual screw mode. If your drill has that, you wanna make sure that it's set up in the screw mode so that the clutch engages. On some of the newer drills, there is just a um, clutch setting on top. This particular brand, it goes from zero to 100. Then if I turn it all the way up to 100, there's an actual drill mode. I want to avoid that. So when I'm setting my clutch, I'm always gonna to wanna to start off on the lighter end. So I always recommend somewhere between the 25 to 50%. All drill manufacturers have different settings from zero to 100, zero to 24, zero to 18. So I like to start in that 25 to 50% and work my way up from there. Um, when I'm running this in the field, I never push my clutch over 75% of my clutch capacity. So for this rigid drill, it goes zero to 100. If I push this drill up to 75% and I'm still clutching out, which we'll show you, then I will actually take this 204 and put it away and go up for a larger machine, maybe a 306 or maybe a traditional cable machine at that point. So I have my drill set up. The last thing is, is there's a high and a low setting on these drills. You always wanna make sure you have this in the high setting, highest setting possible for speed. Once you do that, you can go ahead and take your drill and chuck it right onto the center part. Make sure she's nice and tight. Take your cable out, feed it through the machine. Now here, we actually have a two inch pipe going into a four inch. I wanna show you, the 204 has a two to four inch capacity, so the nice thing about it is, you can actually feed it through a two inch, and when you squeeze this trigger, you can actually watch it expand and clean up to two inch. Then it transitions into four, and that's where we have our ropes at. So I'm gonna go push this all the way downstream, like Jeff said. Then I'm gonna clean on my pullback. And here we're gonna show and replicate what the drill does when it clutches out. And there's a good example of what it does when it clutches out. So we're gonna keep pulling back. So that right there is when I just got into my rope and I drill clutched out. And what I can feel is, I can feel tension on the cable and I can actually feel tension in my drill. So what I wanna do to get myself unstuck is first things first is release the tension on my drill. I'm gonna easily take my hand off this drill and let it unwind. Now that my tension is released, I can either try to pull on my cable to try to release my chains or I can bump it in reverse and there, I got it loose. Pull my drain all the way back out, and there it is. So that is the K9204. And I'll switch it back over to Jeff for the 102. All right. Thanks again, Adam. So yeah, so I uh, really hope those demos uh, helped and just show the importance of, of managing your, your clutch with your 102s and 204s when you're using that you know, portable power that we have with, with those machines and how the new iClutch with the, the 306 is gonna help you protect your cable, but still get the most out of the machine. So we're really excited to be able to show that to you, to you all today. So um, the last thing I wanted to show you uh, demo-wise before we just talk a little on the accessories in general is just uh, this new uh, attachments that we just came out with. So for the, the K9102 specifically, we have added the brush attachments. So we have these for inch and a half and two inch size brushes. So really great for, for very light cleaning if you are in a very uh, fragile pipe and you just need to be able to get some fine things off the wall, especially for any type of, of relining preparation. Uh, there's a, a, a big opportunity for that. Uh, and then same with, with if you're doing any spray lining. So you can use these brushes to spread your epoxy as you're, as you're actually relining the pipe. So we've got the tools to help you with both the preparation of that relining and now it's just starting to get into to the actual full relining of the pipe. So we're really excited to have this additional offering for, for all of our machines. So we only have the, the nylon for the 102. Uh, as you go up to the 204, 306, I'll show you in a second here, and we've got the nylon, nylon steel brushes. So what I wanna show you here with the 102, and then something else just to show, is we have these securing rings. So um, something that comes up common, and, and I'll just kinda talk to this, is, is you know, losing any type of your attachments with FlexShack because of the, the set screw connection. So the reason we have that set screw connection 
is that gives the smallest profile as possible for all of our different machines. So that's what's allowing that you know, expert drain navigation to be able to handle those tight 90s and casts that are all built up that are really hard to make it around. So that, that, that's a, a part of our purpose-built decision as to, to why we have the set screws. And the way that we've really found a, a good way to educate people on you know, how tight is tight kind of thing is with the, the, the um, Allen key we provide, what you want to do is kind of touch that down to the cable. Once you feel it on the cable, then you give it like a full quarter turn and that's securing that set screw onto the cable. And what the, the brushes have added is we have a securing ring. So now if you are getting stuck on something and it's pulling, you've got this extra stopper with some additional uh, protection to keep that tied to the cable so that it stays on. And, and the whole purpose of this demo is just to show you that, hey, I can really safely spin this nylon brush in ceramic, in porcelain, and not have any types of issues come up. And even with the, the uh, securing ring in front, so, Kelly, you might want to come up here. You can see I'll actually show this pushing through. So as I start spinning it, I'm going to feed it, feel the first part of the trap. The next one. And now I'm all the way through. And I'm at the back. And I'm back at the flange here. So really just a quick demo just to show you how these nylon brushes can be used in some different applications as we're extending, you know, uh, what our flex shaft machines can do in the market. So actually, if you follow me over here, show you, show you kind of the last thing we have and all the different accessories and options. So I just showed you the nylon. So, you know, we've got it up to six inch for the 306, four inch for the uh, 204, and uh, inch and a half for the 102. And then the nylon steel, we didn't see much application for two inch and smaller. So we have a two inch nylon brush designed for the 204 specifically. So if you do need a two inch nylon steel option, we have that for the 204 cable. And this is great for if you're, again, in the relining application with like a PVC and you need to get those walls prepped to take a liner, these steel brushes will actually help kind of scuff up that surface, give it something to adhere to and really stick right. And then the other application we've seen is after you're done descaling, is being able to clear those chips down the line. Because even with water running, those, they're so dense, they're just sitting at the bottom of the pipe, they're not flowing down the, the drain line. So using these as, as kind of a, a plow as you're spinning it and pushing down pipe to help clear everything with that water flowing. So uh, I'm seeing some people use it and actually running the brush right behind the chain, using that um, even as a centering guide, putting one in front, one behind, keeps the chains a little bit off the ground. Now you can manage the, the um, spacing of your chain. And one thing I'll just kind of clarify too, in all of our kits, whenever we ship, a flex jack machine, we provide spacers for, for each one. This is my 204 uh, kit bag here, and this is for my four inch spacer. So even though we've given you plain chains that don't require a uh, spacer in between the chain knockers, we provide it for you just to show you that optimal setting that you want those collars set to get the, the best optimal cleaning in the drain. So, uh, they are required whenever you're running anything with the carbide tips, so penetrating or carbide heads, you always want to have that sheath in between there because that's just protecting the cable. Otherwise, those links can hit the cable, can nick a wire, can break one of those winds loose, and you'll start to see that effect where it'll start to, to kind of, um, one of those outer strands will come loose. So having that spacer on there is really important when you're using the, the carbide, and I'd say it's optional when you're using the plane. So if you wanna add some stiffness at the end just to help with pushability or, or anything like that, it's still an option you can add. And then with all of our flex shaft machines, we ship the Teflon-based lubricant with it. So that is what our cables are actually oiled in and, and lubricated with before they're stuffed into the sheathing and, and put into the machines. So what the, uh, how you wanna use this moving forward, why we supply you some, is any exposed part of your cable. It's just good routine maintenance to, you know, every month or so, put some on a rag, apply that to any exposed cable, really keep that adherence there, keep that cable wound tight together. That's what that does. And then the other application for both flex shaft machines and any of your, your push rods on your inspection cameras is it'll add kind of a layer of, of uh, uh, you know, kind of like viscosity on the outside to be able to help you with, with just pushing down the line. So pushability gets improved by using the, uh, the lubricant. So um, again, this is the whole, the whole line. So now we've got the brushes for 102 up to 306 in nylon, nylon steel for the 204 and 306, and the securing ring for each size cable, as well as all of our different chain knockers. 
So uh, that, that was the main things I wanted to take everyone through today, and happy to open it up to, to any other questions you have, and look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for letting me spend the time with you today. We do have some questions, but okay. first, let's, that link regarding the accessories. Yeah. It's available through the rigid uh, Instagram link. If so they go on to the, the rigid Instagram link, we've got some support documents out there for your chain knocker guides and the new brush accessories. So if you need any help finding those catalog numbers or kind of everything I just explained today, we have some, some guides for showing, you know, which accessories are best in which applications and pipe types. So hopefully that will, will help anybody that needs that additional resource. Okay, here's our first question, Jeff. How, to, how do I jump a trap or navigate fittings? So uh, that uh, goes back to the kind of the, the goose in the trigger like I was talking about. So when I was just trying to push this brush at first, I was having trouble getting it around that trap. Once I started rotating the cable, that helped me get through. And same with, with running you know, all three of the machines. Anytime you're stuck in one of those traps or fittings, the uh, first option, depending what you're, what you're clearing, is if you have a plane chain on, you can take out that uh, spacer that I was talking about, and that will give you some extra flexibility at the head of the cable to help you make that navigation, make that turn. And then the combination of either with the 306, just stepping on the foot pedal a little bit, or pulling the trigger with the 102, 204 to get those chains spinning, to get that brush spinning, to help you get through those traps. Okay, we have a few more questions. How often should we do maintenance on the 204? Uh, if you're talking about just like general cable maintenance, I'd say it depends on usage, obviously, but if you're kind of a, called a light user, you know, maybe a couple times a week, every month, two months would be good to do that, that lubrication technique that I talked about, putting that on a rag, adding that to exposed cable. That, that should be the only major maintenance you need to do. Other one that, that kind of comes to mind and, and goes back to the chain knockers, some people having that come loose, is you know, after every other job, every, every two jobs, just go in and, and recheck that those are tight before you go down the line. So just add another of that quarter turn onto those, those set screws and ensure that they're tight before you go down the line. Do so that's pretty good general maintenance. All right, you must have a fan here. Alan's <laughs> asking, will Jeff be at the wet show, which is now the first week of May? Ah, that's the plan. Yeah, absolutely. Our whole team will be. We're, we're absolutely in. in uh, we love wet. That's a big part of what Rigid does. And, one of our, for the group that I'm in, Underground Technologies, that's our biggest industry trade show of the year. So absolutely, we'll be there. Look forward to seeing you, Al. All right, and Adam's gonna ask, answer this question. Or the question is, how much does the 306 weigh? So the 306 weighs about 150 pounds, and it is very well balanced. It weighs 150 pounds, but it drives like it only weighs 50. Uh, what Jeff talked about, the usability to to pull it up into multiple contact points. Um, I load this in the back of my pickup truck for daily uh, demos in the field and have no issues with it whatsoever. Um, considering the, uh, it's a likelihood for a drum machine can weigh up to 250, 300 pounds. This is about 100 pounds, so 150 pounds is lighter than a standard drum machine. Um, don't let the looks fool you. It is much lighter and drives much easier than what it looks. So really well balanced, much lighter machine than a traditional drum machine. We're getting a lot of questions on uh, price. Jeff, do you want to repeat the prices again? Yeah, yeah. So starting with the 102, it's, a, it's about $1,000 list price. So, you know, working with your distributors, I'm sure you get, get better pricing than that. The, uh, the 204 is at $1,499, so just under $1,500. And the 306 is at $4,499. Okay. Any other questions? We don't have any more. All right. Well, I really appreciate everyone's time. I hope you, you got a, a lot out of it and really appreciate it. So thank you for coming and we'll be in